Sudden injury or illness can afflict anyone at any time. Knowing how to calmly respond to any sudden accident is a crucial aspect of your role as a care worker. Health and safety regulations and the health and social care regulators in the UK require that a minimum first aid provision is made in every care home or workplace. Every workplace must have at least one person on the premises responsible for emergency first aid. This person is called an appointed person. An appointed person may also be a qualified first aider, which means they hold a current emergency first aid or first aid at work certificate. For care homes, health and social care regulators require that the manager and a senior member of staff on duty are appointed persons and are also qualified first aiders, in addition to all staff being trained in basic first aid. There should also be a suitably stocked first aid box maintained and administered by appointed persons. You must be aware that your first aid skills may be called upon not only to treat service users, but also to respond to any sudden injury that should befall a visitor, contractor or another member of staff. You should be familiar with the health and safety risk assessment of your care home or workplace and consider your approach to first aid based on the layout of the care home, workplace or service user's home and any potential hazards within them. It is the duty of employers to make other members of staff aware of the first aid provision. If you are a home carer then you should be provided with a first aid kit to keep in your car. This video aims to provide guidance on how best to respond to sudden illness and injury and offers advice on correct procedure and current best practice. However, when dealing with any situation that requires emergency first aid, you must be aware of your limits and do not attempt to administer first aid for which you have not been trained. The primary survey is a quick way for you to find out if someone has any injuries or conditions which are life-threatening. If you follow each step methodically, you can identify each life-threatening condition and deal with it in order of priority. Use the acronym Dr. ABC to remember the steps. Danger, response, airway, breathing and circulation. Danger. Ensure you and bystanders are safe. Remove any obvious hazards. Response. Does the casualty respond to voice and touch? Are they conscious? Airway. Identify and treat life-threatening airway problems. Breathing. Identify and treat any breathing problems. If not breathing normally, start CPR. You are then unlikely to move on to the next step of the primary survey. Circulation. Identify and treat any life-threatening conditions, such as a heart attack, severe bleeding and shock, used for casualties who are breathing normally.